We did an all the food vlog at Islands of Adventure recently, and now it's time for us to complete our all the food at Universal Studios, which is the original park. There are lots of good places to eat, so let's get started. Right after you enter the park, the first thing you're gonna see on the left is a sweet shop. I'm gonna show sweets and restaurants. There are several locations at Universal and at Islands of Adventure that have these same kind of treats. So honestly, if you pass this up, you can find it again later. And keep an eye out, because. A lot of times they do have specials on their homemade fudge. One of our favorite places to eat that is underrated is at the Today Cafe, which is when you first enter to the right. They have a nice variety here, like seasonal treats. This was during Christmas time. They had some holiday desserts, and then they have their normal pastries and eclairs. But one of the things I love are these sandwiches. They do have healthier options like these salads, different oats, great for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. We have eaten here a few times and it's never been disappointing, so definitely check it out. I think this place is easy to miss because obviously a lot of people want to go eat at Harry Potter, but I feel like the quality here is really good. They make everything fresh, at least that we have tried, and lots of seating inside and outside. We were recommended to try the Big Apple, which is a grilled cheese with apple inside. Of course, they have this tomato soup on the side with some bread, and we tried the Bulls and Bears sandwich. You can tell they make that potato salad in-house too. It was something I hadn't tried before really good and then we had this Capri sandwich as well I like that all the sandwiches are nice and warm and toasted and the ones that have meat you get a lot with it it's definitely feeling but I didn't feel overstuffed and I would recommend that apple grilled cheese or for breakfast which I would recommend going to they have muffins and pastries but they also have breakfast sandwiches honestly I would go back for that avocado toast which they do have during the day too that was really good good. Now for breakfast options at Universal, this or the Leaky Cauldron would be the best options. Next up is the Central Park Crepes, which is right across from Mel's Diner. If there is a line, it can take a little while, but they do make everything fresh. We always love the dessert crepes, just like that cookies and cream one, so good. And then sometimes they run special ones like the hair creme brulee, but it is stuffed, so either you can hold it, cut it, but it's still gonna be really messy. And then we always love the brisket one too. The crepes are only eight to $10 for what you're getting, it is really filling. It can be great to get something to eat and then go to your next place and you aren't spending a ton of money. One of our favorite places if we're on a budget. Down Hollywood Boulevard, they have a Schwartz Pharmacy, which is an ice cream shop which serves Haagen-Dazs ice cream. And they have shakes and melts, sundaes. It can get pretty packed in here. We actually haven't tried any of the ice creams because usually we're getting ice cream at Diagon Alley. But there's two places, this one and another place to get Haagen-Dazs Dawes ice cream and they actually serve Dole Whip too just like Disney. Next up is Mel's Drive-In. Based on the movie American Graffiti when we ate there Rick kind of took you along and kind of showed you the decorations. It's super fun. Old school diner and inspired by the 1950s. So they have lots of different burgers, french fries, onion rings, chicken sandwiches and even mac and cheese on the kids menu. We got a kids burger, Rick got a bacon cheeseburger and then I got a barbecue burger with an onion ring on it and then Jack got the mac and cheese. Everything was really good the last time we visited. It was really filling. We actually couldn't finish it. But if you're in the mood for a burger, there's actually several different locations. You can get them around the park. The next one would be Richter's Burgers, which is over by San Francisco, across from Fast and the Furious, and by the Jaws Shark Bruce. Now it's probably the same kind of burger as Mel's Drive-In, but I noticed they have a Swiss Mushroom Truffle Burger, so that's one of their specialties right now I'm sure it changes we ate there a long time ago wasn't too impressed but it's another burger option next to ET is the Kid Zone Pizza Company it's about 14 to 15 dollars a slice now these are huge slices so a lot of times I have shared with my daughter it's a standard pizza lots of cheese and lots of sauce but if you want to share something really easy really quick then this is a great option and great for picky eaters too next up is Springfield and the Simpsons area there are several places to eat but let's start with the lard lad donuts this is a great spot for the famous ginormous donut the big pink but they also serve regular donuts apple fritters and donut sundaes but these are massive so these are the regular sized ones and then this one is the big pink 
They also have a huge one that has a chocolate frosting, but this is the classic. The regular donuts themselves are pretty good. Usually there's not a ton of filling inside, but if you want a sweet treat, this is a great option. My favorite though are the donut sundaes. They take the little pink donut and they put ice cream and you have a choice of toppings. So we've got chocolate ice cream with Oreos and vanilla ice cream with Reese's Pieces. Very filling and very fun to get. The next up is inside the Krusty Burger. There's a huge cafeteria with lots of options to eat. This food court has a Flaming Moe's area, Krusty Burger, a Luigi's Pizza, the Flying Dutchman, and the Chicken Shack. If it is a busy day, just expect to wait at least 30 minutes to get in line for food. It's usually pretty busy in here. Just a heads up, the couple times we have eaten here, it's been really greasy, so just be aware of that, especially with the fried foods, the fried fish, shrimp, and calamari. This chicken shack is famous for the chicken and waffle sandwich. And of course, you have the famous burgers from Krusty Burger. The names are pretty funny, just like the show, the clogger burger, the heat lamp dog, very appetizing. To be honest, we do need to have a redo because when we went, the only thing we really liked were those curly fries. Everything else was kind of soggy, bland, or just not cooked enough. Now this, he also got tacos from the taco stand. Those were actually really good. It's probably a better option for your buck. Now you don't get any salsa on the side, but the tacos are pretty well loaded inside. If the Simpsons area isn't going to be rethemed, then we will definitely try to review the food again. Next up is the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. At Universal Studios, you have Diagon Alley, and then at Islands of Adventure, you have Hogsmeade. So we're gonna explore Diagon Alley today. There are three places to eat. This first one is an actual restaurant, the Leaky Cauldron. The second and third options are gonna be sweet treats. The Leaky Cauldron is a sit-down restaurant, but it's more of a quick service. And depending on the day, sometimes you sit and then order, and then sometimes you order and then sit. It seems to change quite a bit. The decor in here is just like in the movies, so if you are a fan, you should eat here at least one meal of the day. We've eaten here a few times. One time we did it at breakfast during the early park admission, so there was barely anyone around. The kids got a pancake breakfast, Rick got the traditional breakfast, and then I got the American breakfast. The traditional would be fresh scrambled eggs, sausage links, black pudding, English bacon, baked beans, grilled tomatoes, sauteed mushrooms, and breakfast potatoes. And then we have gone for lunch and dinner, so this is the bangers and mash. The kids typically get mac and cheese as a kid's entree, which they do love, and then Rick usually gets their fish and chips. The fish and chips especially never typically disappoints. And I did try the toad in a hole. You have to really like English food to really like this. It was okay, but I'm sure there's more authentic places out there. I do remember liking their sticky toffee pudding, but we are huge fans of the potted cream. That never fails to be amazing. It kind of reminds me of like a butterscotch pudding or a butterscotch custard. And then there's a trifle cake, which we thought was just okay. But we get the potted cream almost every time. They do have scotch eggs as an appetizer and then we got the mini pie combination which is a mini cottage pie and a mini fisherman's pie or you can get them separately a lot bigger and the potted cream again we got the regular and chocolate both are really good the chocolate usually has a hint of cherry too they also have a platter of cheeses veggies bread if you don't want to do a big meal and we tried their grilled chicken sandwich which I remember being okay a little dry if you like this kind of food I would definitely recommend Finnegan's which we're going to show coming up. It has very similar options, I just feel like the quality is better. If you're in the mood for something sweet, Sugar Plums is a great option. It has candy, chocolate, but there's also a case of different desserts. And just a heads up, it can get pretty tight in here. We went when it first opened, but it gets packed full of people. And the chocolate frog was my favorite. There are a lot of fun chocolate and candies to try. It isn't the best quality chocolate, but they have some fun things like popping candy inside. And like Jack said, he's a obsessed with the chocolate frogs we have to get one pretty often and it comes with a card if you go to honey dukes over in hogsmeade at islands of adventure you'll see a lot of the same desserts but there are a few differences 
Both have different candy apples, different cupcakes, and the same kind of fudge. Both of them have the no melt ice cream and the cold drink cakes. So at either a park, either of the Wizarding Worlds, you can find some good stuff. The kids love the no melt ice cream, which is basically frosting. And just a side note, there is butterbeer ice cream and butterbeer cold, frozen, or hot over at the Hopping Pot, which is right next to Sugar Plums. They have all sorts of fun drinks to try, and there's even an elixir stand over over by the Green Gots Bank. One of our favorite stops at Diagon Alley is that ice cream. I think it's the best ice cream in the park. We've had almost all the flavors. We've had the different sundaes, the hard packed ice cream, and the soft serve. They have a huge variety of flavors, some sounding delicious and some sounding a little weird. The hard packed ice cream flavors are chocolate chili, which has a little kick to it, apple crumble, vanilla, salted caramel blondie, chocolate, clotted cream, which kind of reminds me of sour cream, Earl Grey and lavender, sticky toffee pudding, chocolate and raspberry, and finally strawberry and peanut butter. Now I personally love the soft serve. You can get it with a banana swirl, chocolate swirl, granny smith, mint, pistachio, vanilla, orange marmalade, toffee, toffee apple, or strawberries and cream. I love the ice cream with the cone and you can get one or two flavors of the swirl. The hard packed ice cream is of course always delicious too, minus the clotted cream. I didn't really care for that. The soft serve ice cream is around $6 and the hot fudge sundae which comes in those cups is around $10. It's one of our favorite treats to get in the entire park. We also have a Universal Studios playlist if you want to check out more tips and tricks, early park admission, how much time you save with Express, and really deep diving into the park. So I will link that down below. There is so much here to see that you don't want to miss while you're on your trip. Next, we're going to show you Lombard's, but right next to the Lombard Seafood Grill, there is a pastry company, San Francisco Pastry Company, and they have similar kind of desserts and pastries like the Today Cafe. I noticed a few minor differences, but of course it's going to depend on the time of year, what seasonal treats there are, but I did notice the cream horn wasn't at least in the Today Cafe that I've seen, so probably just a few differences. And they had very similar sandwiches too. Next up is Lombard Seafood Grill, which you would never know is back here if you're not looking. We had just recently went for the first time. We were pretty pleasantly surprised. It's really nice back here and really empty just because I think people pass it by very easily. Rick tried the French onion soup and I had a four cheese spinach and artichoke dip. Both we would highly recommend and then the kids got a kids cheeseburger and Jack got the grilled turkey sandwich. So we tried the fish and chips basket and then I got the fisherman's basket which has Alaskan cod, shrimp and calamari and base scallops. Definitely a lot of fried food but it was really good if you like seafood. It can be a little pricey though. Leaving the San Francisco area and heading towards Transformers and the Mummy over by New York and Chicago area of the park, we're going to show you Louie's which is a pizzeria. They have a quick service window right outside the front or you can go inside and order with a little bit more options. Like these special desserts and they have different kinds of pizzas as well as pastas, fettuccine alfredo, spaghetti with meatballs, a meatball sub. The pizza was very similar to the Kid Zone pizza over at the Woody Woodpecker Pizza Company. I don't think it was anything to write home about. It was just okay. You're going to be paying about $16 a slice. They are big slices. Though. And that Alfredo sauce was kind of watery. It wasn't very creamy, so I wouldn't get that again. We did enjoy that tiramisu though. I'd say if you want pizza, definitely go here, but I personally would avoid the pasta. However, one of our new favorite spots is Finnegan's. We were really surprised about this one, and it really is a hidden gem. I believe this bread was complimentary with all the dinners, but we did get scotch eggs, which I thought were way better than the Wizarding World ones, and then we got a Guinness warm three cheese dip and we ordered some extra pretzels so the kids could have one and also the food was very good and just like at Lombard's they got a grilled turkey and a cheeseburger it was about the same as before but I got the shepherd's pie which is seasoned ground beef and mushrooms with a crust of potatoes and cheddar cheese very filling and very delicious and then Rick got the grilled salmon with veggies and garlic potatoes that were on the side but best of all if you come here you at least need to eat the dessert we tried that apple caramel bread pudding and the Irish 
chocolate cheesecake. This is a dark chocolate cheesecake and Bailey's Irish cream sauce with chocolate crumbles. And this is warm cinnamon apple bread pudding served with apple cider, caramel, and vanilla ice cream. I would 100% go back just for that dessert though. That was heavenly. The only restaurant we have missed was Cafe La Bamba, which is right next to Mel's Drive-In. Now this just became a regular open restaurant during the day versus only being catering or for special events. But looking at their menu, they have burritos, tacos, different bowls. I'd love to try it here if they keep it open. I hope this video was helpful for you to plan your trip at Universal Studios Florida and check out our All the Food Islands of Adventure because that is Universal's second park and there is so much to eat there too. This video took over two years to complete all these restaurants, so I appreciate you watching. And a big thank you to Maddie and Lachey for helping support our channel. People like you help us to keep going and doing what we love. Stay epic and subscribe for more videos. Go to our channel and subscribe. And subscribe. Click this video for all the Fuda Islands of Adventure, which features Marvel, Jurassic Park, more Harry Potter, Toon Lagoon, and Dr. Seuss. And thank you so much for watching.